going to talk about common base and common collector <laughs> amplifiers, mid-band analysis as usual. The common base amplifier has the base common to both input and output and the circuit looks like this. You have the transistor, now you draw in this fashion because the base is to be common, all right. The input is to be applied between the collect between the emitter and the base and the output is to be taken from the collector to the base. But then the collector must be biased, must be biased. So we attach a resistance R sub C and take it to plus VCC. As usual, this is an NPN transistor. Then the base also has to be biased, the base current has to be supplied. So what we do is from the base to ground, we connect a resistance R sub 2 and from this junction to VCC, we connect a resistance R1. It is exactly the same way, just orientation has been made different. And then the output is to be taken from the collector. So the output goes via a coupling capacitor C2 to R sub L. And this is my V0, the root mean squared voltage, the phasor voltage. And this is the current I0, the load current. Now at the input, obviously if I have to connect between, between emitter and base, a source, I cannot make it short. I have to use a resistance, okay. And this resistance cannot be bypassed, right? Because if it is bypassed, then the source, the AC signal cannot be applied. So we must have a coupling capacitor C1 and the source, the usual story RS and the source is VS. This is my common base amplifier, okay, the total circuit. You understand the connections? Once you know how to argue what is to be applied where, the circuit can be drawn from logical arguments. You do not have to commit to memory, all right. Now, the, <coughs> the biasing, as you can see, is in the same manner as the common emitter amplifier except for the fact that if the base is like this, this will cause a feedback and therefore the base now has to be bypassed. You connect a capacitor C sub D so that it does not cause a feedback. If the base is not bypassed, then there will be problems with regard to feedback, okay. It will, ha it will affect the gain, it will affect the input resistance and everything, okay. This is the, this is the circuit, yes. The importance of CB. You see, what I want is that the AC signal should be applied between the emitter and the base, okay. And this cannot be done unless R2 is bypassed. If R2 is not bypassed, then obviously the input signal V sub I appears between emitter base plus R2, which causes a feedback because there is some amount of outputs which also shall flow through R2 some amount of output, okay. So we have to, we have to bypass R2 now and that is why we call this capacitor CB, base bypass capacitor. Now to draw the equivalent circuit, if you follow the sequence, we have VS, RS, C1 is a short for mid band and therefore I have RE. Then I have the emitter terminal, the base is grounded here between the base and this is the collector, okay. Between the base and the emitter, you shall have the Rx and R pi and the voltage across R pi is V pi with polarity this positive here and negative here. The usual <coughs> usual hybrid pi equivalent circuit, you must do it carefully and then this is the, this is the internal base, this is the internal base 
and this is the uh, emitter between emitter and internal base is R pi this voltage is V pi between the collector and the emitter we shall have the current source G m V pi from the collector to emitter you must keep the directions the same. In addition we have this inevitable R 0 which I shall show as a dotted connection R 0 and we will assume that R 0 goes to infinity in order that it does not complicate matters. R 0 is of the order of for the example that we have been considering it is 139 K and mostly it can be neglected. From the collector from the collector then you have the <coughs> what do you have? You have R C going to ground and the C2 by the C2 the coupling capacitor acts as a short and therefore you have RL this is V0 and this is I0 okay this is the equivalent circuit. What happened to R1? R1 is connected from VCC which is a ground to a point which is ground. So, R1 does not affect neither R1 nor R2 affects the AC operation is that clear we have killed RB the parallel combination of R1 and R2 which shows its teeth in the common emitter amplifier so prominently okay we have killed it. Now this circuit is now to be analyzed as you can see if we ignore R0 this green part of the circuit then G m V pi this current source this current flows through the parallel combination of R C and R L and therefore V 0 can be immediately written as minus G m R L prime where R L prime <coughs> is equal to R C parallel R L <coughs> multiplied by v pi. v pi that must of course be there. But then you have to find out what is V pi if you look at the circuit this voltage is V i the input voltage. So, V pi can be very simply written as V pi is the result of potential division of V i between R pi and R x, but with a negative sign because the polarity of V pi opposes that of V i. So, V pi is minus V i times R pi divided by R pi plus R x. And as you know, yes, R x that is correct, R x. And as you know, R x is negligible compared to R pi, so this is approximately equal to minus V i. And therefore, the voltage gain A v, v pi, if you substitute minus V i, the voltage gain simply <coughs> becomes G m times R l prime. Therefore, <coughs> our expression is simplified to AV which is V0 by VI equal to GM RL prime. Notice that there is no negative sign here. In the common emitter circuit again the gain was <coughs> minus GM RL prime there is no negative sign and therefore V0 and VI are in phase. This is the uh, one of the distinct differences between common emitter and common base amplifier that the output is in phase with the input this is A V. Now we want to calculate the input resistance input resistance that is the resistance that is faced by the source R sub i. Obviously the input resistance shall be the parallel combination of R e and whatever V i <coughs> faces all right. So if I call this current as I sub i then I sub i and this current is I1 then I sub i shall be I V V i by R e plus <coughs> I1 is that right I sub i the current fed by the source is equal to V i by R e plus I1 now let us see what I1 is. <coughs> I again refer to this circuit. What is the current through this 
resistance, this current, we have taken the polarity as this, so this current is V pi by R pi, this current is V pi by R pi, all right, and R0 has been ignored, this current is Gm V pi, therefore I1, I1 is simply equal to minus V pi by R pi, if I write KCL at the node, at this node, any turn node, V pi by R pi minus Gm V pi, all these three currents go towards the node, the sum of them is equal to 0, so I1 is this and you can see that this is equal to minus V pi beta plus 1 divided by R pi, right? And since beta is much larger compared to 1, we can ignore 1 and then beta by R pi simply becomes Gm. So, this is approximately equal to minus Gm V pi and since V pi is approximately equal to V i, we get this is approximately equal to minus Gm V i. So plus, plus Gm V i. Plus Gm V i. Where did we lose the negative sign? V pi is approximately minus V i, okay. <coughs> therefore, therefore my I sub i, this equation, if I substitute this in this equation, I get I sub i as equal to V i by R i plus G m V i, alright. And therefore, R i which is the ratio of V i to I i is simply equal to the parallel combination of R e and 1 by G m and as you shall see R e is of the order of a k or more whereas 1 by G m is several tens of ohms. For example, if G m is 40 milli mo, 39 as we have taken because we take we took kt by q by kt is 26 millivolt instead of 25. If gm is 40 <coughs> millimol, then what is 1 by gm? It is only 25 ohms, is not that right? And what is 25 ohms compared to 1 k or what is 1 k compared to 25 ohms? Shunting effect. So, this input resistance is of the order of 1 by gm, agreed? because the shunting effect of R e is negligible. This shows the second difference between a common emitter and common base. In a common emitter amplifier, the input impedance is of the order of R pi, all right, which is of the order of a k. On the other hand, in a common base, it is of the order of 1 by G m, which is a small resistance. So, C b input resistance is much less compared to C e input resistance, all right. And you know that the C e input resistance drastically increases if the emitter resistance is unbypassed. If the emitter resistance is unbypassed, then C e input impedance becomes R pi plus beta plus 1 times R e. Of course, you can add R x if you so desire. This is for unbypassed emitter resistance. Common base circuit has the lowest input impedance of all the three configurations, not only C e, also C c. As you shall see in a common emitter, common collector circuit, this is the order of input impedance. In a common collector circuit, we shall show this is the order of input impedance and therefore common base circuit has the lowest input impedance. Now, if the input impedance is low, what kind of source would be the most appropriate? Voltage source or current source? Current source. If it is a voltage source, then there will be potential division between a low resistance and a low resistance, right? Whereas, if it is a current source, high input impedance, all the current will go into the common base. Agreed? So, C b is more appropriate for a current source drive, whereas C e is appropriate for a voltage source drive. 
okay that is the story with regard to the input impedance then of course our current gain A sub i as we have already shown V0 by RL divided by yes VI by RI this is the in, this is the output current input current and this is equal to AV because V0 by VI is the voltage gain multiplied by RI divided by RL and you can see by substituting well let us substitute AV is GM RL prime RL prime is RL RC divided by RL plus RC and RI is RE parallel 1 by GM which is equal to RE divided by 1 plus GM RE agreed RI the input resistance we have just shown is the parallel combination of RE and 1 by GM this is the expression RE into 1 by GM plus RE divided by RE plus 1 by GM this is the simplification and uh, you have to divide by RL okay so RL and RL cancel GM RE is usually much greater than 1 and therefore what is left here is 1 by GM agreed GM RE is much greater than 1 because 1 by GM is much less compared to RE okay this we have already demonstrated this is much less than RE so GM RE is much greater <coughs> than 1 and therefore what will be left is approximately RE divided by GM RE 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 cancels GM and GM cancel so this is approximately equal to R sub C divided by RL plus R sub C that is the current gain is divide, is determined by the load and the collector biasing resistance only it is approximately independent of what the input conditions are okay this is A sub I and <coughs> what would be the output resistance what is the resistance that is seen by by the load does it require any calculation what I want is this resistance R0 RC because it is shunted by a current source whatever be the value of the current source the impedance the internal resistance is infinity <coughs> and therefore R0 is approximately RC why am I saying approximately because of R0 if R0 is there then be sure this is not the calculation it will affect the output impedance so we say the output impedance output impedance r0 is approximately equal to rc r0 is approximately equal to rc sir, now yes so this question has been asked before sir yes why is the input impedance of a dependent current source also infinity any current source the input impedance is infinite the internal resistance is infinite any current source any voltage source whether but dependent or independent a, physically it is not a current source physically it is a current flows here yes. is proportional to some current it flows in some other part of the circuit no but this current is independent of what you connect across it the current gmv pi is not dependent on what you connect across it so it is a current source similarly a voltage source delivers its voltage irrespective of what you connect to it that is the definition and the other quantity a quantity which we often find is AVS which is simply AV multiplied by RI we have found that out divided by RI plus RS. RS and naturally this would be approximately since RI is approximately what 1 by GM this would be AV multiplied by 1 by 1 plus GM RS is that clear and GM RS normally will may be comparable to 1 if it is much larger than 1 then you can ignore the 1 okay RS has not been specified RS could be low it could be a good voltage source if RS is 0 for example AVS is equal to AV so we cannot make this approximation blindly RS depends on what your source is if it is a microphone source then the impedance is usually high 
whereas if it is a if it is a signal taken from a loudspeaker the internal impedance is only 8 ohms agreed so that uh, completes the <coughs> that completes the analysis of the cb amplifier now if we if we use this for calculating the performance of a cb amplifier whose parameters are the same as that of the ce that we considered earlier what were the values we had considered r1 and r2 we shall continue the same example again and again r1 and r2 were 220k rs was taken as 600 ohm the source resistance rc the collector biasing resistance was taken as 2.2k and the load was taken as 4.7k the transistor parameters were gm equal to 39 millimo because i sub c was <coughs> 1 milliampere and this is 1 milliampere divided by 26 millivolt then beta was given so you could calculate r pi as 2.6 k beta the product of the two is 100 r x was given as 100 ohm we did not consider this we could there was no problem in considering r x but it affects very slightly r mu we have ignored <coughs> because it is 13 meg that was the resistance and r0 was equal to 139k we have ignored the effect of this also if we substitute <coughs> these parameters in this calculation then our results are av is 58.5 which is the same as that of the CE amplifier same no change R sub i approximately 1 by 39 milli ohm and this becomes how much would it be 1 by 39 26 we have already calculated this how did you calculate uh, GM but what is I what is I Oh, we did not specify RE, RE was 1K, that is right, RE is 1K, okay. So, RI is 26 ohms which is way down, it is much lower as compared to the <coughs> CE amplifier, A sub I, the current gain is only 0.32, it is much less than CE case. CE case it was less than beta but it was tens in the order of tens 30 or 31 i don't remember what it was but the, here it is it is less than 1 and it can be it can be seen it's logical because whatever you are feeding to the emitter the collector current cannot be more than that of the emitter so the gain, correct, the current gain shall be less than 1 but it's it's much less than 1 it's 0 0.32 only and r0 is 2.2k you can calculate what is AVS would be 58.5 <coughs> multiplied by 1 by approximately 1 plus RS is 600 ohms and 1 by GM is 26 ohms okay. So this is indeed greater than much greater than 1 and you can approximate <coughs> this as 58.5 into 26 divided by 600. The gain is approximately 2.6, right? Yes. Tends to 2.6 because this uh, is approximately 10. Any question on this? That leads us to the common collector amplifier, the third configuration that is possible. Common collector amplifier CC it is also called the emitter follower and this uh, <coughs> terminology emitter follower arises because the output if it is a common collector, collector is common between input and output. So where do you fit the input obviously the where the base. All right. And where do you take the output? The emitter. 
it turns out that the emitter voltage closely follows the base voltage and therefore it is called an emitter follower. The voltage at the emitter closely follows the voltage at the base which immediately says qualitatively that the voltage gain of the circuit shall be approximately 1 okay. It is however always less than 1, it is always less than 1 as we shall show. Now the, <coughs> the biasing of the circuit, yes. So why use a, a distance to amplifier anyway if the voltage gain is very small? Less than 1, yes, because it can be current gain. It can be current gain from base to emitter, there is a current gain. It can give uh, power gain. If the current gain is greater than 1, voltage gain is less than 1, the product can be greater than 1. So it can give power gain, all right and therefore this circuit is used. But the major use of the circuit, let me let me point out right here. If I call this as the emitter follower, this is the input and this is the output. The emitter follower has the property that the input impedance is very large <coughs> and therefore and therefore if you connect a voltage source here, the output shall be virtually decoupled from the source. Okay, that is suppose you have an amplifier of gain <coughs> plus 1, agreed, which the emitter follower is and if you apply a source here, the output does not interact with the input because the source fits into a high impedance. The output impedance usually is small. In an emitter follower, the output impedance is of the order of 1 by gm, alright. So, what it does is it converts a, no, it isolates the source from the load. You can connect any load here which is much greater than 1 by gm, alright. So, the source is isolated from the load and in that sense it is also called a buffer. It is also called a buffer, alright. Let me uh, explain why this term buffer. We shall be using this term again and again in throughout electrical engineering. Let us see why it is called a buffer. Suppose you have a source of resistance 1K and a load which is also 1K and the load varies. No, let the load be constant, it does not matter let the load be constant, okay. Now if you connect this directly, if you connect this directly only half of the voltage will appear here, alright and any change that occurs in the source due to any reason will affect the load voltage also. On the other hand if you apply it to an emitter follower which has a gain of plus 1 approximately then the input impedance let us say is 100 k. <coughs> the total voltage here can be transferred over here, all right. Not only that, the load variations will not affect the source, the source variation will not affect the load. So there, this is a buffer circuit. It isolates the load from the source, exactly like a transformer. How you that? Pardon me? It isolates the source from the load that is load changes do not affect the source, source changes do not affect the load. Okay, suppose the source internal impedance changes from 1 K to 990 ohms, well because the input impedance is large the, the voltage that appears here is still the same. Okay. On the other hand if the load changes here the input impedance the because the, the input voltage does not change the output voltage also does not change, why not? If the load changes because the output impedance of this is low of the order of let us say 25 ohms, okay. So even if the load changes, the load voltage remains a constant. This would not have happened if this was not there, so it is called a buffer. We shall see examples of applications of the buffer later. Alright, now the circuit. 
the circuit is the same as that of the common emitter, same as that of the common emitter, except that the collector is virtually <coughs> grounded. Okay. So what I should have done is I can I take the VCC directly to the transistor. Directly to the transistor, I have an RE which I can no longer bypass because this is my load and therefore from RE I take the coupling capacitor C2 and connect to RL. This is my V0 and this is my I0. Now the base biasing I do exactly the same manner that is I use two resistances R1 and R2 connected to ground and the source is applied through a coupling capacitor source resistance RS and VS. <coughs> this is my common collector circuit. I have not reoriented it. I should have brought this down, turned it upside down and so on. I have not done it. I have drawn it in the same manner that we are used to. I must also mention R1 is connected to VCC. Yes, yes this I have shown R1 connected to VCC. However, in order to get a correct biasing, in order to get a, you see, now the DC load is simply RE, isn't that right? DC load is simply RE, there is no R sub C. DC load formerly was RC plus RE, now there is no RE. Suppose in order to bias the transistor at the appropriate Q point, you have to use a large RE, okay, which you don't want to because of reasons that you will know later. You don't want to use because large RE will also affect the AC load. The AC load is the parallel combination of RE and RL, right? AC load is the parallel combination of RE and RL. Now you, you don't want to increase RE, then what you do is you do use a resistance R sub C here, but in order that it does not behave like a common emitter amplifier, <coughs> we have also used this as a common emitter amplifier. We took two voltages, one from here and one from here and these were called, this was called a para phase amplifier, two voltages of opposite phase. Now in order that R sub C does not develop. Yes. He said I don't want to increase RE because in the AC analysis I don't want RE to be large. No, AC okay. load is determined by RE and RL, parallel combination. Yes, and therefore the voltage swing, this is the DC load line and this is the AC load line. Okay. Voltage swing will be determined by the parallel combination of RE and RL, right? Yes, so I don't want to change RE. If I change RE then RL might approximate for the AC load. <laughs> you see, I don't, RL is fixed, RL <coughs> is fixed. I may want to decrease the effective AC load because I want a particular voltage swing, all right. So if needed, I should not hesitate to use an R sub C, but in order that R sub C does not affect the AC operation, I bypass. Where do I connect a capacitor? Across RC. Across RC or from collector to ground. I shall call this C sub C, the collector bypass. Does it matter the capacitor between this emitter and VCC? Emitter and VCC. Collector Oh, collector, yes, I can do that. I can do that, but if I have a ground, I will connect it to ground. Why keep one of the terminals of a capacitor charged? Make it uncharged. So we can as well use another resistance in the emitter and bypass that only. We can as well use another resistance in the emitter and bypass, yes. We can do that. Correct. What he says is, suppose you used another resistance here and bypassed it. Yes, we can do that. We can do that also. Okay, that's a good good idea. So this is the circuit. As far as AC is concerned, this point is at zero potential. Uh, <coughs> oh, instead of RC, instead of RC, suppose I use a resistance here, okay, and bypass that. 
All right, let me use, let me show you. Suppose we use an R sub E prime here, n bypass it. Then the DC load is still RE plus RE prime, whereas AC load is the RE parallel RN. So this is an alternative. Effectively, we are reducing the value of RC, RE for the AC load. That's right. That's right. Okay. Now let's see. Let's look at the <coughs> AC equivalent circuit of the common collector amplifier. We have the RS, VS. This you should be able to do by looking at the circuit without any further calculation, any further thought. Just looking at the circuit, it should become a part of your daily life, routine. C1 is a short, R1 and R2 come in parallel, so that becomes R sub B, R1 and R2 in parallel, then this goes to Rx and R pi. This R pi does not go to ground, it goes to R E and also to RL. This is V0 and this is I0. This is the internal base B prime, this is the external base B, this is the emitter E from the collector. From the collector <coughs> we shall have a GM V pi where V pi is this voltage gm v pi and where does this go? Ground. It goes to ground. In addition, we shall have an R0. Let us include this R0 now because it is easy to do so. Do you see how, how it is easy? It comes in parallel with R and R. So, it can be absorbed. Now, my RL prime, let me call this as R e parallel RL, parallel R0, okay. Then <coughs> by looking at this circuit, Can you simplify? Let me simplify this circuit a little bit. Vs, then things will be obvious. If I do this simplification, the calculation will almost be done by inspection. This is Rb, then we have Rx, R pi. What is the current through this? What is the current Ib? But this is in terms of V pi, it is V pi by R pi. Agreed? Once you recognize this current, then there is another current here coming from ground. I have pulled that where and taken down. This is Gm times V pi. And the effective resistance here is Rl prime. And this is V0. I have lost IL though isn't it? The load current because I have absorbed RL, but no problem, load current is simply V0 by R. So, I have not lost it, I have lost it only in the picture, I must keep this in my mind, V0 by R. Now, therefore, in this simplified picture, one can very easily write the value of V0. As you see, V0 is the effect of two currents coming over here, V pi by R pi and Gm V pi. These two currents then flow through RL, RL prime and therefore V0 is simply V pi by R pi plus R0. Gm V pi. R0 is included in RL prime. This multiplied by RL prime. Now we also require the value of V pi, all right. What is V pi? V pi is the voltage across R pi. This voltage is V pi. How do you find V pi? V pi, this is V i, 
V pi is the result of potential division of V i between R x, R pi and not R L prime. Beta plus 1 R L prime. The effective voltage here is beta plus 1 times that current multiplied by R L prime. Is that clear? Because the current flowing in this is not I B. It is I B plus beta I B. Okay. So, the effective V pi shall be R pi V i divided by R x plus R pi plus beta plus 1 R L prime. The point clear? Therefore, V 0 by V i which is A V the voltage gain I can write this as <coughs> G m plus 1 <coughs> by R pi which comes from here times R L prime into R pi divided by R pi plus R x plus beta plus 1 R L prime. And if you notice, if you notice the numerator when you multiply by R pi, it simply <coughs> becomes beta plus 1. So, they conspire to make it look very nice expression beta plus 1 R L prime divided by R pi plus R x plus beta plus 1 R L prime. Now, beta plus 1 R L prime normally will be much larger than R pi plus R x. So, this is approximately equal to 1, but you must remember it is always less than 1. Okay. <coughs> this calculation also has revealed what the input resistance shall be. Is not this absolutely clear what the input resistance is? If you look at this circuit, it would be R B in parallel with whatever this phase is. What does it face? R pi plus R x plus beta plus 1 R L pi. And therefore, the input resistance I write without any more addo as R B parallel R pi plus R x plus beta plus 1 R L prime. And you can see why this resistance is very large because of this beta plus 1 R L prime. Okay. And R B normally is a large resistance, 110 K was the value for our circuit. <coughs> now, A sub i, we lost I 0, but not from our mind. A sub i is A V R i divided by R L. <coughs> and it can be calculated. We know the expression for A V, A V is approximately 1, so this would be simply R i divided by R L. Can it be greater than 1? A V is approximately 1, so this is approximately R i by R L. That means it must be greater than 1 because R i is very large compared to R I. Okay, it is much greater than 1. So, you can get uh, <coughs> current gain. You can get power gain also. Now, to determine the output resistance of the circuit, this is not obvious. If we look at the original circuit, what we have to do is to look from here and calculate RC. It is not obvious because there is a V pi. Even if we kill V s, V pi shall be there. Why? Let us see. Let us follow blindly the procedure. What do we do? We kill the input source, connect a source at the output and find out the current. Let us do that. Then what do I get? I get, let us say this source is V0 and this current is I0. This will connect to first R0, it will connect to RL, not RL, RE. RL is what is seeing this impedance, okay, RE. Then we have an R pi 
take the voltage across which is V pi plus minus, we have an Rx, this is Rx and then we have Rb, what else? Rs. So one thing we can do is let us <coughs> parallel these two resistors and call them Rs prime, call them Rs prime. So my simplified circuit becomes V0, I0, can I combine these two also? into an Re prime, Re prime is equal to R0 parallel Re, then I have an R pi, let us write it in this way, plus minus, is the polarity all right? Is the polarity all right? Yes, yes. Okay. Then we have a resistance Rs prime. Now you see, even if the source has been killed, V pi is not killed. V pi is the potential division of V0 between R pi and R s prime. So, one at a time, yes. Input the excitation and output the V0. So, here what we are doing is we are giving the excitation from the output. Because we want to find out what RL faces. What does RL see? What does RLC? What resistance does RLC? <coughs> so, that's right. We are finding a Thevenin equivalent resistance. So we are killing the input source and connecting the source at the outside, at the output, and finding the current. Okay? Now <laughs> did we neglect RS? No, we did not. RS prime is RS parallel RB. Yes. Okay. So, can we write the expression for V pi now? So, where is Rx? Oh, Rx. Okay. Okay. Sir? Agree? Yes, sir. What about the dependent current source? Yes, sir. Which current source? So, from the electric to a beta plus 1. It has to be divided by beta plus 1. Very good. So we go back. Why don't you point out here? <coughs> All right, I intentionally missed that. There should have been a current source here, G and V pi. Okay, there should have been a current source here, and this should come here. Agreed? G and V pi. This should come here. And if you now calculate, if you now calculate I0, you see I0 consists of <coughs> three components. One is G and V pi, one is V0 by Re prime, this current is V0 by Re, Re prime and the third is this component and this component is V pi by R pi. So, if you write KCM here, I0 would be equal to GM V pi minus V0 by R prime plus V pi by R pi. Is the point clear? There are three currents and V pi is related to V0. How is V pi related to V0? It is V0 multiplied by R pi divided by R pi plus R s double prime. <coughs> is there a minus sign? Is there a minus sign? One of our students is claiming there should be a minus sign. Yes, yes, and I had no alternative but to agree with him. There is a minus sign. Because this polarity does not agree with the polarity of V0. So, what else do we want to know? I know I0 in terms of V pi and I know V pi in terms of V0 and therefore, I can calculate now V0 by I0 and the expression I skip the algebra. Is the procedure clear? Yes. Procedure is not clear. What I do is I write KCL at this point. I0 equal to GM V pi 
<laughs> That's right. Okay. I write I0 plus GMV pi minus V0 by R prime then minus V pi by R pi. So I know I0 in terms of plus V pi by R pi. Plus V pi. You see these three currents are coming. This three and this is leaving. <coughs> so this plus this plus this minus this equals to 0. What does this equation contain? This contains I0, V0 and V pi. Substitute for V pi from this expression. Therefore, you will be left with an expression containing only I0 and V0. And then R0 is the output resistance and you can show that this is R0 parallel RE parallel which I had called RE prime parallel R pi plus Rx plus Rs parallel Rb we had called this as Rs prime and the combination is Rs double prime we are now putting this explicitly divided by Gm R pi plus 1 well it is simply beta plus 1 ok we write this as beta plus 1 this is the expression now it is not as simple as the calculation of output resistance in because of a CE or CB amplifier. You can show from practical approximation that this is approximately equal to 1 over GM. And the reason is very easy to see. You see Rs parallel Rb plus Rx would be less as compared to R pi. And therefore, R pi by beta is 1 by gm. 1 by gm is of the order of 25 ohms. R e is of the order of a k, 40 times that. R 0 is 139 k. So, these fellows, they do not have any contribution to make. And the output impedance is approximately 1 by gm, which is independent of any external resistance connection. So, the emitter follower has the property that it is a high input impedance and a very no output. Okay, we stop here. is the process of producing different components by plastic deformation of work material by passing it between rotating rolls. The process is called longitudinal rolling if the forming rolls are rotating in the opposite directions and flow of work material is along the length of the jaw and perpendicular to the central line of the rolls. By this process, we can produce products like bars of different cross sections, steel for constructional work. Flat products like plates and sheets of various thickness can also be produced by this process. Another version or type of rolling process is transverse rolling. Let us have a look at a transverse cold rolling machine. In this process, the forming rolls are rotating in the same direction and the flow of material is either radial
or the flow of material is along the axis of the job, which is also parallel to the axis of the forming rolls. A large variety of products like pulleys of different sections Rollers for overhead cranes, cycle free wheel, BB cups, gear blanks, and gears can be easily produced by this process. This machine can roll circular discs of aluminium mild steel and alloy steel of varying thickness and diameters. The two forming rolls are mounted on the spindles running in the bearing housings of the two blocks, one on either side of the jerk, and these blocks are moving in the dovetail slides of the main bed. In this process there is less material wastage, higher production rate and long to life. Hence, it is much cheaper a process than any other conventional process. Nobody can deny that we can travel faster, much faster than ever before. But at what price? Increased air, land and noise pollution. Increased casualties and accidents. Rapid depletion of petroleum resources. Automobiles are, in fact, now recognized as the chief contributors to atmospheric pollution throughout the world, emitting huge quantities of lead, oxides of sulfur and nitrogen, in addition to carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. Road accidents also take a heavy toll. In India alone, about 40,000 people die every year and over a million are injured and these numbers are rapidly increasing year after year. And as is common knowledge, automobiles consume a major share of petroleum products. Consequently, this endowment of mankind accumulated over millions of years is getting so rapidly depleted that by the year 2000, we would be left with only 40% of the total stock available at the beginning of the 19th century. <laughs>